This is the BBC on November the 3rd, 1960. Today, the last intake of men from all walks of life and from all over the country are being taken to army camps to start their national service. In the House of Commons, MPs express concern at the effects the ending of conscription will have on our ability to protect Britain and her colonies from the escalating Russian threat. Thank you. Come on! Come on! Let's Come have on you! Here. Get out of the truck! Come on! Come on! Let's have you! Come on! Get out of the truck! Now! Get in line! Move! Come on, out! Get in line! Get in line! Before I drive that bloody truck over the law of you! You! Put that down! Get your hands out of your pockets for a tear off your arms and feed them to my dogs. What is your name? Davis, sir. Do not call me sir. I am sergeant. You're a stupid Welshman. Aren't you, Davis? Aren't you, Davis? Yes, sergeant. How stupid? Very stupid. How stupid, Davis? Very stupid, sergeant. I'm Sergeant Butcher! You sorry mob! Our two section! For the next eight weeks, I am your god and your tormentor! You will live to please me! And I am a very, very, very hard man to please! Everything you have learned all that you had no longer exists because I am taking it away from you. You will start here with nothing. Such a crazy clown You're the biggest thing in Pacifist pansies. Yes, Sergeant. Wouldn't lift a finger of rat in there that was trying to violate your girlfriend. No, Sergeant. It's because you've got no backbone, Private Keenan. Because I've got no girlfriend, Sergeant.
3 to 1 on the beatnik. I'll have some of that. Stop up. Right back in line. On your feet, Keenan. What you saw here today from Private Keenan was hooligan behavior, not the actions of a soldier. It will not happen again. It will get you or the man next to you killed. Do not forget that. Take it all over. to the assembly hall dance next week. And yes, I understand you miss your wife and or girlfriend terribly, and a few drinks with me would ease the pain, but I'm afraid it's not gonna happen. Any more questions? Good. Now, shall I tell Sergeant Butcher why you've kept me talking far too long, or do you open up? A few weeks ago, the Russians dropped a 27-ton nuclear bomb. It cracked windows 900 kilometers away. The Americans will feel they have to go one better. Is it so funny? Well, actually, you reminded me of a joke. About Yuri Gagarin. He writes a note to his wife, dear Natasha. I'm going to outer space, be home next Monday, and when he comes back, was well, after the ticker tape parade, presumably, he finds a note from his wife. Dear Yuri, I'm in the bread queue. No idea when I'll be home. <laughs> I'm glad somebody can see the funny side of the impending Armageddon. I saw a bomb once. When I was 12 years old, we were stationed in Cairo, before all the business at Suez. The locals wanted all the Brits to get out. Someone threw it over the wall of the compound. Well, if the headache persists, just tell the guard. I'll bring something. What happened with the bomb? killed my mother and father.
Gentlemen, this is your barrack room. You will tell those children that your wives have convinced you are yours that this is where you became a man. You will respect this place. You will shine the backside of every surface and polish the stove until it gleams. Do you understand? Yes, sir. yes Sergeant. One step forward, any of you served in the Cadet Corps, Girl Guides, Boy Scouts, or any other such military organization? Private McIlvenny. Boys, Brigade Sergeant, committed to discipline, obedience, and all that tends towards a true Christian manliness. Sergeant. Private White Bound. Officer Training Corps Sergeant. Eaton, awarded the House Medal, twice. Private Ratton. East End Firm Sergeant, Mile End Division, serving under Generals Ronnie and Reggie Cray. You think you're being clever, Private Ratton? Awarding medals at lightweight, bantamweight and featherweight, Sergeant. You think there's some sort of honour among these knife-carrying gutless thugs? The heroes in my street, Corporal. The thieves, Ratten. Just like you. Watch out for this one, lads. It says here the judge gave him a choice. Time on D-Wing or two years in the company of honest, decent soldiers. Two section. You will unpack your bags. Line up outside the mess hall with your eating irons in 15 minutes. Oi! Right then. What are you playing at? You need to pack in that back shadow, you'll put us all in it, my friend. I'm no friend of yours. It's every man for himself in this place. And in that one statement, Private Ratton misses the entire point of the army. What do we think all that business with Keenan was about? Why does the sergeant have to do the shouty, shouty all the time? What's the point of that? I'm so glad I won't be staying here for long with you sad, sorry children stuck in this place for two years. How's that, then? Posh boy's daddy gonna get him deferred, is he? No. I think the old man would prefer if I caught a bullet on the front line for queen and country and all that colonial gut. So what, then? You gonna get yourself shunted over to officer training? No. I've seen quite enough of that. But I will be waving you pack of no-hope as a fond farewell heading out of that gate in exactly three weeks' time. <laughs> yeah, right. Nora, all I did was put some stitches in his forehead. Nobody's telling me what's going on. And I've got no idea where Jimmy is now. What's your training for? Private Keenan didn't tell me anything. I thought they'd let you in to see him, wouldn't they? And you can ask him. <laughs> no, I can't. Really, there are rules. Connie, ever since I can remember, I've been the one everyone stares at. The darkie, from the first day of school to the cinema queue last night. And it wears you down. I understand that. But what has this got to do with... Today, at 10 o'clock, for the first time in my life, I got a chance to belong somewhere. Lance Corporal Lobbs asked me to marry him. <gasps> oh, that's lovely! And 10 minutes later, he was AWOL and facing a charge. For all I know, I'll never see him again. Nora. I need to know what's going on. I'm sorry. I really can't help. <laughs> I thought you were a friend. Well, I could have Nurse Charles look at it for you, uh, Captain Gunnover, but I don't think it's serious. No. Um... I was actually on my way to you on another matter. I found these pills. I was looking for my collar studs. I opened one of the, um, for the regimental dinner last night and uh, tried all the drawers, including my wife's. That's where you found them. In your wife's drawers. Well, I can confirm what I think you already suspect, Captain Gulliver. This is the famous new contraceptive pill. You didn't discuss this with her? It's just so confusing. I, I made clear to her my wish, my, my need for a son. 
I mean, how could a wife do such a thing as this without, without at the very least, consulting her husband? And how are things in the, uh, in a marital bed? Well, since she came back from her sister's after that last falling out, things are uh, a lot calmer, less volatile. So, to that end, I know it sounds somewhat regimental, but we agreed to copulate on every second Friday. But, I mean, how many of those Fridays was a betrayal, a, a lie? What is a husband to do? What he must do, and do it at great length, is talk to his wife. My mother told me Before she passed away Said, son, when I'm gone Don't forget to pray Cause there'll be hard times Hard times Oh, yeah, yeah Who knows Better than I Well, I soon found yeah. out Just what she meant When I had to pawn my clothes Just to pay my rent Talking about hard times Hard times Oh yeah, yeah Who knows I was a better than I was. Private Keenan on a charge, sir. All right, bring him in. Prisoner! An escort! Quick! March! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Hold! Left! Turn! Sir. <clears throat> well? I assume you know your name and rank? Private Keenan, sir. Colonel. Major. Captain. Are you one of these angry young man pacifists, Keenan? Doesn't mind swinging his fists about? No, sir. I looked at your record. You didn't even try to get deferred. I can't believe you didn't know your options. Go before the conchy board, blow your little toe off. All that. Must be my keen sense of duty, sir. Don't push it, Keenan. You're in enough trouble already. What are we going to do to Lance Corporal Hobbs? Sergeant Butcher seems to think you're going to tear his head off. Isn't that what you want here, sir? Violent aggression? Directed at the enemy, not the chap next to you in the ranks. Lance Corporal Hobbs had, until today, an exemplary record. Now, moments after you arrive, you've turned him into a fugitive. What's this all about? I'd rather not say, sir. It's a personal matter. This is the army, Keenan. We don't allow personal matters. They get in the way. Find something useful for Private Keenan to do until he changes his mind about this, Sergeant. Anything else? Still one man short in two sections, sir. Chap called Lomax, making his way down from Glasgow on a motorbike. Well, let's hope he has the makings of a soldier. Get this man out of my office. Prisoner! Let's go! Left! Turn! Quick! March! Left, right, 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 Put a call for me through to my wife, would you, Henson? Yes, sir. Right away, sir.
We have a system here, Keenan. Turns gangs of scruffy lads, you, into disciplined teams. It works. You won't change it. Don't try. That sounds impressive, Sergeant. Just makes me wonder why the government's scrapping it. Sergeant. Tell the CEO what happened or you'll spend every day of your time in this camp in here. Eight weeks of basic training is not so long, Sergeant. And then when you leave us, and your first posting is to some sticky, mosquito-infested hole, my recommendation will follow you every day of your two years of service. Hmm. You see a lot of toilet bowls, Private Keenan. Private White Bound tells me he is missing an item of property. A Swiss gold watch. This causes me great sadness. But I will give whoever has transgressed the chance to show he has some moral fibre. The chance to earn the respect of the section. Obviously, the culprit has no redeeming qualities. Private Whitebone, search every locker. Private Hoy, look under every mattress. Now! Private McIlvenny, help Private Hoy. Now let's get this sorted out! Anything to say for yourself, Private Ratton? Oh. Gentlemen, you are suffering because of Private Ratton. You need to thank him for that. Thank, thank you, you, Private, Private Ratton. Ratton! Private Ratton does not understand the value of discipline in this army. Until he does, you ladies will pay for his delinquent behaviour. You think I care about them? You think I want their respect? What was that, Ratton? Did you hear that, boys? Private Ratton wants you to do another five laps. Oh. What? And he says Private White Bound should do ten for being careless with his property. Sergeant, shouldn't you be told? 
talking to this Private Keenan instead of me? Finding out from him what's behind all this? Private Keenan has refused to say. So for the moment, we're both in the dark. Why are you here, Sergeant? Well, because... Last Corporal Hobbs is in serious trouble. You know, he's facing serious disciplinary measures. You came to tell me that? Well, I knew that. Just wanted to know. It's better if he gives himself up. No. He wanted to check I'm not hiding him under a bed or an attic. I'm not stupid. Just because I don't have stripes on my arm. I wouldn't want you to waste your journey, so you better have a look around. Go on. Only make it quick, cos I've got a bit behind bar and white arse in ten minutes. And don't worry, if your boss asks me, I'll tell you I had a good look round. Nora, thank you. You were really good. I mean, even I believed what you were talking about. Oh, that was not... Never mind that, let's hear it. You shouldn't have shouted at the sergeant like that, though. In my own home, I shout at who I like, including you. Now, what the hell's all this about? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I come home and find you've broken the back window to get in, and then I have to lie through my teeth to your sergeant. And you heard him. Serious disciplinary measures, so don't tell me nothing. I only met Keenan once. It was on a train, we got to playing cards, and he said that I, I cheated and took five quid off him. Did you? No, no, of course I didn't, but he got it into his head that I had. Things got a bit heated, a bit physical. He ended up coming off worse. I just got off the train. And that's it? That is all? Well, if he's in the wrong, all you have to do is tell Sergeant Butcher no, no, all this and... No, I can't go back. I punched my CEO. You get two years for that. So what's the plan, Jimmy, if you can't go back? And I'm asking as your bride-to-be. What do we do now? Things I thought were true. One. There's no such thing as fate. Then the call-up papers arrive and almost the first thing I see when I get here is that man. And I think of you, and I want to kill him. I've been trying to get used to the loneliness, trying to forget how we used to be together. But fate, or something like it, doesn't want to let me. If I even have to do one more lap of that parade ground rapping, you better sleep with your eyes open. I didn't take the what? Who cares? That's not the point. Barrowman set me up. Can you not see what he's doing? What I can see is blisters on my feet because you think you're Al Capone right now. When we all jump if he tells us and shout, yes, Corporal, what, you think that's because we like it? Here's what I think. This is 1960. The time for saying yes, sir, to suit and uniform is over. I think we need to teach that boy a lesson. The next time he decides to open his... What on earth does that smell? Probably me. Oh. oh. Well, you were all learning the value of discipline and team spirit, I was cleaning out the toilet block. Well, if it isn't, Roger Bannister. What was the big chase all about, Keenan? It's personal. Oh, spill the beans, Gandhi. Where's your sense of team spirit? We just had one rebel get us in trouble. We don't need another. You're gonna teach me a lesson, too? A crack on the head after lights out, maybe. And who put you in charge, White Barn? Anyone else think Rat needs to be kept on the lead? After what he's just put this section through? I'm just the voice of the people. Mr. Lomax. Captain, I've had a look at the boat, and I uh, regret to inform you that, uh, well, I can't swim. What? Shoot the driver. If an officer gets in your way, shoot him too. That's my plan. Well, to be absolutely honest, I didn't think we could do it. 
Drop those shorts, McIlvenny. You've got nothing they haven't seen before. You heard what Butcher said. Do you want to be stuck cleaning toilets for the next two years? You've got no right to demand to know about my personal life. Fine, except somebody punched the CEO. They're not going to forget about that. Next! Just tell him something. Anything. Come on, Davis. Show us all what you're made of. Private Keenan, get over here. Get off shorts now, Keenan. Don't cover it up, lad. We're not on the Boy Scouts now. You're all right, old chap. Get away from there. Come on, who's next? Private Ratton, sir. I nearly slept with his mother once, but the man behind me in the queue had the right change. Don't rise to it. Do you want to spend night in the infirmary? Is there a problem there, two section? No corporal. <laughs> Pick up those knees, you little tea leaf. Ladies! Fold this. Like that. Like we used to do. Under fire. In Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about... In there, as the actress said to the private. That's <laughs> 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 all there is to it, ladies. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hi. You need some help for that. I can manage. It weren't a question. You need some help with that. Otherwise, come tomorrow's inspection. We're all having it in the neck. Davis is right. It's the only way it'll work in this asylum. He helps you with what he's good at, and you help him with someone else. The world waits. Will Private Ratton shift the monolith of his stubbornness the necessary half an inch? On the left, wait, march! Left, right, left, right, left, turn! Impersonating an officer, however badly, is a grave offence, Private Lomax. Maybe my sense of humour is not to your taste, but I'd go stark raving mad if I didn't crack some rather bad jokes. I think it's David Nevin, sir. No, the killing is much better left to someone like you, an officer and just possibly a gentleman. Too genuine, Sergeant? Are you a fake, Lomax? I think you are. I've no idea! I'm not even sure who is responsible any longer. You don't think we should show him to Captain Bulgakov? See if he's trying to get a loony ticket out? No, sir. I find it best, usually, not to indulge them. All right. Put him in with this section. I'm at Lomax. Left turn. Quick march. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right.
Well, will you look at me? I'm a soldier. And I'm almost sad I'll be leaving you losers. Almost. Right, Bam. This escape plan of yours. The thing is, nobody believes you've got one. Oh, really? Anyone want to put a bet on it? Let's say a fiver. Hey, listen to Rockefeller, yeah? Why don't we make it more interesting? If you're still here after three weeks, you clean everybody's boots for the rest of basic training. Uh, that's oh, 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 oh. Okay. But if I win, and I'm stood here with my exemption papers, then Private Keenan here will kneel and lick my boots clean. <laughs> Attention! When your sergeant enters your barrack rooms! Private! Quick! March! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Hold! Left, turn! Two paces forward! March! About turn! Two sections. This is Private Lomax. He won't bite. At least I don't think he will. Time to go home. The party's over, I'm afraid. Somebody sat on the cake. <coughs> Just walk around him. Private Keenan, follow me. You've got a couple of hours' duties before lights out. Sergeant. I'd like to talk to the CEO. Well, what was it that filled one so meek and mild with such rage? Sir, Lance Corporal Hobbs, he, um, tried to steal my girlfriend, sir. It was about a year ago. I didn't realise how angry I still felt until I saw Hobbs again, sir. And that's it? That's the whole grubby truth? Yes, sir. I just saw Red, sir. So we can close this sordid chapter. Except I'm still missing a head cook, aren't I, Private Keenan? Dismiss. You, uh, had a good day, darling. Um, I was thinking now things are a little better between Colin. us, then. If you suggest that we talk things over or, or lay our cards on the table or clear the air or... I'm going to have a drink so I can face the rest of the evening. I suggest you do the same. Kissed you and called you sweetheart. Do the chairs and your pot seem empty or bare? Do you gaze at your doorstep and picture me there? Is your heart? Filled with pain Shall I come back again Tell me dear Are you lonesome tonight I wonder if You're lonesome tonight 
You know, someone said that the world's a stage and each must play a part. Fate had me playing in love with you as my sweetheart. Act one was where we met. I loved you at first glance. You read your lines so cleverly and never missed a cue. And then came act two. You seemed to change, you acted strange. And why, I've never known. Is your heart to fill with pain? Shall I come back? Tell me, dear, are you lonesome to Go back to your barracks, Prager Lomax. We'll talk about this with Captain Bulgakov in the morning. Let's all just see if we can be soldiers, shall we? This girdle is too tight. Are you sure it's really mine? I've got better things to do than have these clones waste my time. Take them to the kill village. Teach them a lesson they won't forget. We gotta get out of this. The series continues at the same time tomorrow. Escape to the country next on BBC One. Some character West Country homes to fall in love with. The frustrating general knowledge challenge that is perfection with Nick Knowles in 45 minutes. And after that, a new series of adventures on the antiques road trip at 4.30. Yeah,